go uh, we thank god that uh, he has given us yet another day so as we begin uh we'll give in a word of prayer again father in heaven as we delve into your word this morning we pray that you help us to understand what you want us to know as we study this morning i pray that uh, whatever we study is a blessing it's my humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So yesterday, uh, we looked at a topic. Uh, we looked at a topic called the devotional life of, of the remnant. And it was basically, and it was not in any way uh, exhaustive. We uh, just basically scratched the surface. Uh, there's quite a lot to cover, and probably if we have more time, we'll, we'll talk about look to it tomorrow. And today, <clears throat> today we're going to look at the current duties and the service of, uh, of the remnant as the people who are preparing to uh, to meet our Lord or to go home or to be translated. Uh, and our memory text today is taken from. It's taken from the book of uh, Romans, sorry. It's taken from the book of Romans, uh, chapter chapter 12, verse one. I know it's a, it's a rather common, common verse. It's not, it's not a new verse. So it says, I be, sorry, sorry about that. So it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the masses of God, I present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yeah, so there are, there are a couple of things we ought to be doing right now, both uh, physically, but also spiritually. We are not to be idle. Uh, like we shared that at that time, God created this planet and and he he ordained time during the the whole week of creation. He created time, uh, the weekly cycle, which we know as um, twenty four hours a day, the, which are seven days, beginning from Sunday up to Friday, which are six for for working, and then the seventh a day that is to be dedicated to his service, uh, and also maybe uh, <clears throat> fellowship. So as we wait for Jesus Christ, there are certain things we, we ought to be do. We're not supposed to be idle. So we had looked at that particular verse, but I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the masses of God, that you present yourself, uh, body is a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So <clears throat> we're reading here from the Acts of the Apostles, it says that when the members of the church of God do their appointed work in the needy fields at home and abroad in fulfillment of the gospel commission, the whole world will soon be one and the Lord Jesus will return to this earth with great power and glory. Acts of Apostles uh, 119. Uh, somewhere I'll not still quote verbatim, uh, the prophet Ellen White says that if you can manage to win one soul from home, it's like a mission journey you've done to a country like India. Uh, yeah, so it's really very hard to uh, to convert the people at home. Why? Because the people at home actually know us, know our, our ins and outs, know our weaknesses and strength. So if you can manage to go to get at least one person, then it's a very big victory uh, compared to someone that did a mission journey to to India. Everywhere there is a tendency to substitute the work of organizations for individual effort. Human wisdom tends to cons to consolidation, to centralization, to the building up of great churches and institutions. Multitudes leave <clears throat> to institutions and organizations the work of benevolence. They excuse themselves from contact with the world and their hearts grow cold. They become self-absorbed and unimpressible. For love for God and man dies out of the soul. 
So in other words, we are not to be rather indolent or leave certain things which we can do to, uh, you know, to the church organization. We ought to be doing things that, uh, you know, the organization cannot do. Uh, Christ commits his followers an individual work, a work that cannot be done by proxy. Ministry to the sick and the poor. So uh, many a times we're like, well, we, we have given our offerings, we've given, uh, you know, we've contributed to this and that. So I, I will not be there. The money that I've contributed should, uh, you know, should basically do that, which is okay. But also uh, personal presence is, is required of us. So <clears throat> we are not to do everything by proxy. Uh, ministry to the sick and the poor. The giving of the gospel to the lost is not to be left to committees or organized charities. Individual responsibility, individual effort, personal sacrifice is the requirement of the gospel. And that's taken from the Ministry of Healing, 147, 1905. So in other words, we are to be like the tentacles of an octopus. Each, each tentacle of an octopus has its uh its work or its purpose so we're to be like the you know the fingers of a hand each of the fingers has its purpose so together as they work uh they fulfill a common duty yes so even if it was one finger lost uh the entire body would feel pain so that is how it should be each one of us can do uh the work of god where they are and that is uh, what it, it was basically saying. So let's see uh, what kind of occupations does Jesus expect, to, expect us to be doing while we wait for him. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. The thing I want to bring out there is we are laborers together. With God, just as uh, I said, we he we had he he did um um ordain that um ordain the weekly cycle by creating time. He was setting an example for us. We may not create time, but we use the time that he created to do service to fellow human beings, and uh, yeah, both uh, the the spiritual but also. Uh, the physical work. You remember Daniel? Uh, he 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 used to do God's work. Then later on, he went back to the king's business. Uh, with exception of those whose whose calling <clears throat> is strictly or uh, purely or full time uh, into ministry. So uh, this is what he said: that Christ says, "Occupy till I come." Luke 19, <clears throat> verse 13. It may be a few years until our life's history shall close, but we must occupy till then, meaning there is no, uh, you know, there is no space for idleness. God has not called us actually to, to live in the, you know, to, in, to be in the temple or in the church or the place where we congregate to worship, to be there the whole day, the entire week, save for, for the days or the hours specifically dedicated to to him, like the Sabbath. <clears throat> so in other words, uh, the rest of the time um, in the six days, we must be doing something. If it's not full-time ministry, then we must be laboring, doing some, you know, secular service to fellow human beings, uh, which in turn we, um, <clears throat> brings back profit that should actually be used for, for family and also for furthering of the ministry. <clears throat> Christ would have everyone educate himself to calmly contemplate his second appearing, all to search the word of God daily, but not neglect present duties. So that is very important. We are to search the word of God daily, but also not neglect present duties. That is later 28, 89, 87. Christ declared that when he comes, some of his waiting people will be engaged in business transactions, some will be sowing in the field, others reaping and other and gathering in the harvest. 
and others grinding at the mill. It is not God's will that his elect shall abandon life's duties and responsibilities and give themselves up to idle contemplation. Uh, I hope this is very clear for us. And give, them, give themselves up to idle contemplation, living in a religious dream. In other words, we were not to close ourselves in some sort of, uh, you know, a stronghold and, you know, be there the whole time and, you know, read the Bible the whole day or singing the whole day and do nothing. That is not uh, God's order. Uh, when you look at the Sabbath commandment, uh, Exodus chapter 20 verse, I think, uh, 8 through 12. Uh, it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt work and all of thy labor. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do thy work. And, you know, it goes on to say, but the thing I want to bring out is it begins by saying six days we will do our work. And then on the seventh, we can now go on to and place ourselves before God. All right, so that was taken from manuscript releases 26, 1901. Crowd all the good works you possibly can into this life. And that is testimonies for the church, uh, volume five, page five, uh, 488, 1989. Sorry, 1889. We are going to work as if each day was uh, might be our last. We should watch and work and pray as though this were the last day that will be granted us. Uh, you usually hear that saying that they work as if today uh, there is no tomorrow and also be ready as if Jesus is coming uh, maybe today. So we should watch and work and pray as though this were the last day that would be granted us. The Bible somewhere uh, usually asks us to look at the ants and see how diligent they are in business, in their own business. And so while uh, it's worth emulating the way and the charisma they use to do that, our only safety is in doing our work for each day as it comes. No wonder Jesus says in that prayer or told us that prayer to say that, give us this day our daily bread and give us and lead us not into temptations. In other words, each day at a time, uh, fresh bread from heaven should be our lot. Working, watching, waiting every moment, relying on the strength of him who was dead and who is alive again, who lives forevermore. That's letter 66, 1894. Each morning, consecrate yourselves and your children to God for that day. Make no calculation for months or years, though it's good to plan as well. But uh, we are to be, <clears throat> we are to be like children to look out for that, uh, you know, uh, with that which God has given us for that particular day, because we don't know what is coming tomorrow. Anyway, these are not yours. One one brief day is given you, as if it were your last on the earth or on earth. Work during its hours for the master. Lay all your plans before. <clears throat> lay all your plans before God, and <clears throat> to be carried out or given up as providence shall indicate. That is testimonies for a judge. Uh, Seven. Uh, Forty-four. Nineteen. Nineteen zero two. And now, finally, we'll look at Sabbath observance. It's not in any way uh, an exhaustive uh, presentation, but we'll look at this because of uh, shortness of time. And we'll pray. <clears throat> Sabbath observance. The observance of the Sabbath in the system of the church, uh, six, three, four, nine. Uh, three, uh, to three, six, eight. Our Heavenly Father desires through the observance of the Sabbath to preserve among men a knowledge of himself. 
He desires that the Sabbath shall direct our minds to him as the true and living God, and that through knowing him we may know, we may have life and peace. Testimonies for the Church 6, 4, 9. So you notice uh, we began with uh, outlining what we ought to do. That is God asking us to work diligently in whatever business here. Uh, we are engaged in as long as it glorifies him. We work diligently. And then finally, it's the Sabbath. Uh, that should be uh, the weekly cycle throughout until Jesus comes. All through the week, we are to have the Sabbath in mind. In other words, uh, beginning from Sunday downwards, we must begin. Uh, we must begin preparing for the Sabbath and all that. <clears throat> we, we are to have the Sabbath in mind and and be making preparation to keep it according to the commandment. We are not to merely to observe the Sabbath as a legal matter. We are to understand its spiritual bearing upon all the transactions of life. <clears throat> When the Sabbath is thus remembered, the temporal will not be allowed to encroach upon the spiritual. No duty pertaining to the six working days will be left for the Sabbath. Uh, that is to mean for the church six, three, five, three, five, four. So in other words, the things which we are supposed to do during the week, uh, they're supposed to be done in the six days and let the Sabbath uh, <clears throat> for good. Okay, so we will now uh, give in a word of prayer. Our Father God in heaven, we're thankful that you have taught us of our duties as we contemplate uh, <clears throat> or as we wait for the second coming. We pray that the things we've learned today will continue being a part of our lives until we meet again. It's my humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. God bless you all.